Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventure of the Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com and the topic of chemistry titled Balancing Chemical Equations. All right, let's take a look at... Why can't I click? There we go. So, balancing chemical equations. The basic idea is that if we look at the mass of the reactants, remember the reactants are the things that we start out with on the left side of the arrow, uh, these reactants have to add up to the same amount of mass that's over here. Because a chemical reaction doesn't have things just disappear. It's really about atoms rearranging. And if they're rearranging, which makes a lot more sense than disappearing, um, then, or appearing from nothing, if they're just rearranging, then we need to end up with the same amount of mass as we started with. So in this case, you can see we have two sodium atom atoms here. We end up with two sodium atoms here. We start out with two chlorine atoms. We end up, because we got two of this whole molecule, or this two ionic compound, we end up with two chlorine atoms there. Okay, so basic procedure that I'd recommend for balancing chemical equations is try and focus on one element at a time. So get the, get the phosphorus as balanced then get the hydrogens balanced, then get the um, whatever else might be there, oxygens balanced. I'd also recommend starting with the ones that they're the fewest of. So if there's something that's only in two, get that balanced first. Uh, later on, balance the ones that are in three or four different equations. Okay, that's why we tend to balance the hydrogens and oxygens after the others is because they tend to be in a lot of uh, the compounds. So let's go ahead and practice here real quick, and then we'll get into some of their, like, the concept builders so you can see what's going on. We're actually going to go to the concept builders themselves for this particular video. So in this one, we can see that uh, here's, here's our arrow. So on this side, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen at the moment. And on this side, we have two hydrogens and two oxygens. Well, that means we need another oxygen on the left side among the reactants over here. But we can't change the chemical formula because what we have, what was provided for this reaction to happen was water, H2O. And so we can have as many water molecules as we want, but we can't change it to like hydrogen peroxide, which would be H2O2. Okay, instead, we can just use two of the water molecules that are present. Because when you add water, you add billions and billions of molecules. So it's just how many of each thing are gonna react. So if we have two of those react, well, that's gonna double the amount we have. Two times two would give us four hydrogens. That's not, four hydrogens now. And two oxygens, because each molecule has an oxygen atom will give us two oxygen atoms. In case you aren't super strong at counting atoms, let me just really quickly here show you what that would look like. So this two H2O, we would have one water molecule, and then the two out front means we've got two of them. So you can see we've got two oxygens and four hydrogens, which is what we counted over here. You can think of it kind of like the distributive property, the two, you have two of everything. Okay, so if we have four hydrogens and two oxygens, well now the oxygens are balanced, we've got two of each, but we've got four hydrogens, so to get more hydrogens here, we have to have, end up with two molecules of hydrogen. Keep in mind, each molecule of hydrogen has two hydrogen atoms, so if we have two things that each have two hydrogen atoms, that means we'll have a total of four hydrogen atoms, which does uh, balance it at this point. Okay, so that's the idea of balancing it. Let's click over and start the first concept builder here. So this is the apprentice level, as you can see. Um, looks like I lost my pen. That's okay. We'll just deal with that and just use it like we're using it. So I'm going to go ahead and click up here. That gives us one of each um, kind of atom. And you'll notice down here at the bottom, um, 
Let's see if I can get that back. Okay. Oh, well. We'll make do. Um, so, uh, down here, okay, hopefully you can see that. Um, we can see that we're counting the number of reactants. And I did not think to look that up. Let me really quickly. And so we um, can see we got one protactinium atom and five iodine atoms, one protactinium and two iodine atoms. So we're like, okay, over here we need more iodines. Well, here's where our iodines are. So let's get another one of those. And notice when we got two here, that made it so that we now have four because there's two in each molecule and we have two molecules. So that means we now have four. Okay. And so um, we have five over here. We have four here. So like, okay, well, we need another one. Well, now we got six and five over here. So now we need another one of those. Well, now we need some more of these. So we'll put a couple more. And hey, finally, we're to 10 and 10. Boy, that wasn't easy. But now we've changed the amount of protactinium. So now we need to change this one. And finally, everything is balanced. Okay. So notice that we started by, by actually we had the protactinium with one each. We had that balanced. But then when we balanced the iodine, that messed up the protactinium. So then we had to go back and rebalance it. So just make sure you're being careful about that. On this one, as you can see, it's counting the atoms for you. you check answer and voila, that, that away. All right, on to the master level here. Now in the master level, you have to count the atoms yourself. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and do that. So if we get one of each, well, let's start with one of these. So that means we have one copper here. And then we got some stuff inside a parenthesis. So we have to look outside the parenthesis. So this would be two oxygens and two hydrogens. Okay. Then, then we went, we're going to have at least one of everything. So I'll go start by putting one of everything. So here we have three more hydrogens. One, two, three. So that's five total. We have one phosphorus. And we have four oxygens. One, two, three, four. Okay, over here on the reactant side, notice here's the arrow. So now over here on the reactant side, we have three coppers. We have outside the parentheses a two, and we have just one phosphorus inside the parentheses. So that's going to be two phosphorus. And we have a two outside. We have a four inside. So that means that there are four oxygens in this little group here, and there's two whole groups. So that's going to make for eight oxygens. You can just say we distribute the two in to the two times one for the phosphorus, two times four for the oxygen. Then over here, if we just had one water, we have two hydrogens and one oxygen. Okay, clearly we're not balanced. Nothing's balanced right now. But copper is only in two places and phosphorus is only in two places. So let's start by balancing those. So we see over here we have three coppers, and here we just have one. So if there's only one in each molecule over here and we need to get to three, we're going to need to have two more molecules of that. So two more molecules of that is going to add two more coppers. Each molecule had two oxygens, and we just added two of them, so that's four more oxygens. Here we have two hydrogens, and we added two more. That's four more hydrogens. So that would look like that. Well, now let's go ahead and try and balance the phosphorus. We see we've got two phosphorus on this side, one phosphorus on this side. Since there's one per molecule, let's add another molecule here. That's going to add three more hydrogens. One, two, three. One more phosphorus, which was our goal. And four more oxygens. Did I get that right? We should have six and eight. We should have 14. Okay, I just really quickly double checked my work. There's two in each one here. Two times three is six. There's four here and two. That's eight. Six plus eight gave us 14. All right. 
So then let's see how we're doing. It looks like we need a lot more oxygens and hydrogens. Well, let's add some water till we get there. If we want to get to 14 oxygens, and we have nine right now, that means we need five more water molecules, right? Because each water molecule just has one. So if we add five more, we'll get to 14. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And if we added five molecules and each one has two hydrogens, that's 10 more hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And voila, it worked itself out. Sometimes you might have to go back and redo something, but that works out there because um, all of our atoms counted up to be the same number on the reactants as products, the same number of each type of atom mass has been conserved. We check answer and voila, that away. And on to the wizard level. Let's do an example problem there and then we'll give you a chance to try it out on the rest of them. All right, um, so this time, the only difference between this and the last one is that the atom count is optional, okay? And so I'm gonna show you how to use uh, polyatomic groups and not count the individual atoms, okay? So I don't have my pen here, so we're gonna just have to do it with numbers. So first of all, we have AL here. There's two ALs here and just one there. Oh, let's go through and put one in each place first. So there's two here and only one here, so we're gonna need two of those, okay? Then we have three SO4 groups. We only have one SO4 group here, so we're gonna need three of those. So we have three SO4 groups and three SO4 groups here. I apologize if you've learned the name of an SO4 group, sulfate. Um, I don't wanna confuse people that haven't learned that yet. So I'll just call it an SO4 group. All right, and then we see we got three zincs here because we have one in each molecule and three molecules. We just have one zinc here, so we just need to make sure that there are three of them. And I'm pretty sure we haven't unbalanced anything, so let's just double check. We have two aluminums, two aluminums. We have three zincs because of the three out here, and there's just one in each molecule. And again, three with, with it's just the single atom. And if we want, uh, we have three SO4 groups here. We have one SO4 group in each molecule and three molecules. So that's again, three SO4 groups, okay? So you don't have to uh, click that. I actually haven't tried this yet, so it should work here. So, but it says it's optional, even if it's recommended, we just did it kind of in our heads. And voila, that away. So I hope you've enjoyed learning with us here on Scientific Adventures of Beardman. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe. And if you uh, have any questions, go ahead and put those in the comments down below. And I hope you enjoy puzzling these out. Each one of these is like a puzzle as you try and change those coefficients to make everything work. So get those that brain in gear. Take a little break if you need to in the middle of it. But uh, get those equations balanced. We'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beardman.